Resurrection Sunday. It is time for our scripture reading. When I ask you to take your sword in your hand, stand with me as we read from the book of Matthew. Matthew 28, we're going to start at the first verse. said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you see Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There will you, you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. Love us enough that he went through 
a living hell. And the writer said by his stripes, we are here. It is because Jesus did not say a mumbling word. We have the right and privilege to know that no weapon form can prosper against us. No lie can damn No sentence can put us in hell. Because though yet every one of our sins cry out death, his death instituted mercy and grace. And grace says we're forgiven. And so now, Lord, as we sit in this place on Resurrection Sunday, we know that there is a hope beyond what we can comprehend. We know, God, that there's a final place. And because Christ rose triumphant over the grave, that we too, when we lay down, will get back up. So thank you today. Thank you for bringing us to this place where we can celebrate. Thank you for bringing us to this place where we're reminded that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot be. Thank you for bringing us to this place to allow us to know that brokenness can be made wholeness, that deaf ears can hear again and blinded eyes can see again. Thank you for bringing us to this place. But beyond that, God, we thank you that every sin, every transgression has been covered by the blood of Calvary. Not just yesterday's sins, but even today's sins. Those that are in our future, God, have been covered. But let us be mindful that when we play with our eternal destiny, and we willfully sin. Your word said that there is no more of a heart. There is no more chance. Because we count it as unworthy the blood shed by Jesus Christ. Now be with us, God, in this moment. In this preaching time. Separate me from me. Sit down with man and allow the Spirit to have control, God. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. For it is in the precious blood of Jesus and the mighty and matchless name of a living Savior we ask this. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Y'all, you know my first love is here, don't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My first girlfriend yeah. is in the house. Yeah. And I'm so thankful. Now, what you might not know is my first girlfriend was married to a man. Uh -huh. Amen. She was. Yeah. Yeah. My first girlfriend was married to another man, and he shared her with me. <laughs> yeah, my daddy shared my mommy with me. Amen. <laughs> My mother's here and I'm
I won't be too long. Say amen, I might be a little quicker. And you say, go pastor, go pastor. <laughs> you might get a hung. John 20. And also you flip over to Matthew 28 too. Keep your finger in John 20 and flip over to Matthew 28. I'm going to read from Matthew, and then I'm going to flip over to John. Matthew 28, starting at verse 1, says this. <coughs> In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn for the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and become as dead men. Say, dead men. Amen. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that you see Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, but he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goes before you into Galilee. There shall you see him, lo, I have told you. And they quickly departed from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. And now John 20. I'm not going to read it. Now I'm going to move through it because... If you will take time to read, you'll see that this account focuses on Mary Magdalene. And it is an encounter that she has with the Lord on Resurrection Day. And I'm going to speak to you, if you allow me, and if you'll say amen one or two times, on the topic of if you knew about me, if you knew about me, an irreplaceable encounter at dawn. That, that's a long time. If you just want to shorten it, just say an irreplaceable encounter at dawn. But I, but I preface it by saying, if you knew about me, an irreplaceable encounter at dawn. Beloved, the birth, life, ministry and resurrection of Christ are indeed turning points in world history. His life is more than a single event. I, I say that because history hinges on this event of his life. His life changed how the entire world viewed history. His life and his death were so impactful that the historians recognized that everything before his birth was B.C. And you see that with the year that means before Christ. And after his death, it was A.D. or Anodomini, meaning in the year of our Lord. In other words, what happens is Jesus' birth and life separated all of his so no matter how far back you go, you go back to a time before there was Christ. And you dated after his death from the time of his death to his coming again. And so Christ's birth and life 
divides world history. A.D. or Anno Domina means in the year of our Lord. And so his birth, life, ministry, and death, and resurrection transformed not only world history, but it transformed the Old Testament. Before Christ, there was one nation and one race. It was a story about the Jews and how they came together and became the nation of Israel. Everyone else, everything else was considered unclean and heathen. But when Christ comes, we move from one race and one nation to a New Testament where everybody has a chance to become a new creation. You know the scripture, don't you? If anyone be in Christ, the old is passed away and hence has become as new. That, that means that at one time when I was looked at as an outcast, a nobody, a heathen, far from him because of Christ, I now have a place. I now have a new name. I now have a new destiny. I now have a new end. I have a new way of ordering my life. Not just me, but everyone here who professes a relationship with Jesus Christ. So, so, so his life and his death and ministry transformed what once was for a few select and now is available for everybody. Yeah. Uh, I wish somebody knew what it's like to be the last one chosen or not chosen at all. I, I wish there were a, a, a few folks who yeah. understood what it meant to be an outcast, a, a nobody, a person look uh, as if unimportant, but now somebody has put a name and a label on you that says that you have a name that is above every other name. Yeah. 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 You might not understand that, but see, whatever your mama or your daddy named you, on your birth certificate, that's it. But the Bible teaches us that when we become in Christ, that we have a new name. Uh, I don't know about you. I don't know what my new name is yet. But I have a hope inside me that as soon as I get there, I'll hear my new name. And, and just in case you don't understand it in, in, in the future, let me tell you what it is now. Your new name is Son of God of God. Your new name is the righteousness of God. Your new name is an heir and joint heir of Christ. Your new name is you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. And let me tell you something. If God didn't think you were worth it, his son never would have come and gave his life. So we ought to celebrate the fact that we are children of the most high God. I can call a lot of names. Maybe y'all have. I've been called Big Head, Waterhead. I've been called stupid, dummy, blacky. I've been called everything. But I'm so glad this morning that Jesus called my name. One day he said, any time I got a destiny for you, I got a job for you. Uh, and I'm so glad he knows about you and me. Yeah. Matter of fact, the Bible says that he even knows the number of hair yeah. on my head. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's interesting because I don't know. God <laughs> <laughs> speak yeah. for me. That's what I'm going to preach for you. Now let me preach. So, this intersection between the old and the new, that is because of Christ, allows me to know that every event, every fact, every occurrence, every phenomenon, every occasion, every action since he has been alive is now in accord for one thing and one thing only. And that is according to Paul in Philippians 2, 10, 11. 
7 that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. That, 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 that's why he came, y'all. Uh, that, that's why he came. You see, in the Old Testament or the Hebrew Scriptures, they look forward to his coming. They had a future hope. And we who are on this side look back to his living. And we have a future hope just like they have a future hope. Well, preacher, what is that future hope? That future hope is that he's coming again. And not just coming again, but he's coming again to receive us as his own. So this morning, beloved, in our text, in both the Matthew and John reading, we have Jesus. You ready for this? A living text. Uh -huh. yes. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Yes. Yes, sir. So see, Jesus is the living text. Yeah, yeah, the Bible said in the beginning was the Word, the word and the Word was with God, with God and the Word uh -huh. And verse 14 said, and the word became flesh. So we have a living text. Yes. Yes. See, see, that's why you've got to know the word of God. That, that's why David said, the word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin again. That, that, that's why the writer gave, gave me the 215 special. And he says, study to show yourself approved unto God a Workmen needing not be the shame, rightly dividing the word of truth. Why? Because the word is a living text. Yes. Amen. Amen. The word is a living text. Yes. And when you allow the living text to be loose in your life, I'm here today to tell you that just like Jesus says, greater things than he did, will you be able to do? Yes. Yes. Matter of fact, can I drop this in your spirit? God is not a respecter of persons. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. You, you, you just got to believe that God will do just what he says he'll do. Yes, right. I wish I had four or five believers in this place. Yes, yes. See, if I had four or five believers on, in this place, I wouldn't find this so hard to do. Yeah. There'd be some folks celebrating right now and say, Preacher, I'm a witness, preacher. I'm a testimony to Real time in space. 
The record reveals the significance, life-altering meaning emerges out of a face-to-face, touch-to-touch, word-to-word, person-to-person interaction with Christ. Yeah, 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 let me do it again. That life-altering meaning emerges out of a face-to-face, touch-to-touch, word-to-word, person-to-person interaction with Jesus. That's why somebody wrote a song one day saying, he touched me. Yeah. He touched me. Yeah. And oh, the joy that fills my soul. Something yeah. uh, happened. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, and now, yeah. see, see, there are a lot of folk who are part-time lovers Come on. of the word. Yeah. There are some folk trying to play the Holy Spirit. And see, that's what I like about the Holy Spirit, because you can fool me. You, 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 you can fool your full deacons. You can fool other folk who are Christians. Matter of fact, you can really fool the folk who are, you ready for this? In the throes of what I call church entity. You, you can feel, you can fool them. Sometimes you may even be able to fool yourself. Uh, but you can't fool God. See, see, see nobody wants a part time love. Nobody wants to be played. Everybody's looking for somebody to be true to them. Everybody's looking for someone to come correct. Everybody's looking for somebody to be real. You say, listen, if you can't come correct, then don't come at all. That's why I'm so glad the Holy Spirit puts us in check. Uh, the Holy Spirit will put you in check in a heartbeat. Yes, yes, yes. I'm trying to say to me, you know, it's a lovely place. Yes, yes, yes. And he saw this life altering encounter with Jesus. It's face to face, touch to touch, word to word, person to person. Interaction changes Mary's circumstance. The Bible says here, uh huh. In the 20th chapter, verse 1, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. I like that next phrase. While it was still dark. You, you, you all do know Mary Magdalene, don't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The seven demon Mary. Uh huh. The, the Mary who wore scarlet clothes. Uh, the Mary who walked the streets. Uh, Seeking pleasure, that the Mary who would meet in clandestine places and exchange money for, uh, mm, uh huh, y'all know. <laughs> this Mary, this Mary who was once an outsider, now adorned in white, the Bible says she came to the tomb. She came to the place of death, grieving the person who had given life back to her in more ways than one. She came, the Bible says, while it was what? Yet not. She, she, she came to the tomb hollow inside. She came to the tomb the way you get when someone you love has died. She came to the tomb hollow aware that a piece of her life had been torn from her heart at the death of Jesus. And you've been there before when somebody you love dies and there's a hole in your life, there's pain in your heart, there's tears in your eyes that you just can't sue. Mary came in that condition on that morning to grieve the death of a loved one. While it was still dark, she made her way to his tomb she made her way to mourn the man who loved her in a way that transformed her life. The Bible says while it was still dark, she made her way expecting to find the tomb sealed, just like it was the other night when she had left. She made her way to a tomb that had been signed, sealed, and delivered to Roman guards to watch over a dead body. Yes, yes. And I say to today that that's what her problem was. Her problem was that she was looking for a dead God. Mm, the 
problem that she saw immediately was there was a tomb that skillfully and strategically had been sealed with a stone in front of that that said forever. There's no getting in. That body is sealed forever. Her problem, my brothers and sisters, was she was caught up in a nighttime experience that said Jesus was there. Now, if you read further in the story, imagine, if you will, that in the murkiness of a new dawn, caught in the throes of a long, dark night, she makes her way to the sepulchre. And she now sees the seal broken and the stone rolled away. I, I, I suspect that it caused her to stop in her tracks and try to make some sense out of what was in front of her. I, I, I say to you that Mary, in the midst of her predicament, came up with the only logical solution that made sense to her based on her human experience. What she said is somebody has stolen the Lord. Read it, and it says, after Peter went there and the other disciples came, there was dialogue and conversation, and after further investigation, her conclusion, her conviction, her confusion, and her concern remained rigid. Somebody stole my Lord. What she had done is she had concluded that there was some human interference some human hijacking, some human intrusion of the worst kind. What she thought is why even in death there is no respect for empty tombs aren't supposed to be empty. And then a voice speaks. Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Isn't that interesting, my friends? For when you look for death, you always miss life. Right, when you look for the worst in the person, you'll never see the good. Right. Here Mary was, listening to a voice, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? And she missed life. What she was looking for was a human explanation. What she wanted was no harm, no foul. Just tell me where he is. Tell me where your lady's body. I'll go get it. I just want to touch his body. I just want to dress his body before it perishes. Oh, how off she was. How misguided she was. She wanted to get a hold of a dead Christ. Once again, isn't it interesting that he, the resurrection and life, was standing right in front of her and she could not see. We read it, it's in the text. She was there looking right at him. Matter of fact, I say to you that because she came expecting death, she didn't recognize life. Well, I've been hanging my hat there for a long time. Because there's many of us who are in the presence of life, but because we're so death-oriented, we miss out on life. Yeah. There, there's a popular scripture that we like to misquote a lot. And, and we say that the power of life and death is in the tongue. What y'all need to do is read it. Because when it says the power of death and life, because too often we are in dead situations, too often we speak death. Too often we see the negative side of the letter. Too often we count God out. Too often we count ourselves out. What God has said, come on, don't you understand that greater am I in you than anything you can encounter in this world? Too often we expect 
death. And one thing my daddy used to tell me, he used to tell me this, he said, if you look for something long enough and hard enough, you'll find it even if it's not there. So she came expecting that and did not recognize life. In her deep mourning, look, look, look at verse 14 of John 20. Well, let's, 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 let's do 13 verse. In fact, it says, and they said unto her, woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. Now, now, now look at verse 20. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Now, now, now here's the thing in verse 20. 14. There's two uses of the word see. First, it says, and when she had done said, she turned herself back and what? She see. She saw Jesus standing and she saw in, in the Greek it, it, she perceived not that it was Jesus. So, so she's visually looking at life. She's visually looking at the resurrection. Amen. And she does not see nor perceive that it was Jesus. But look at verse 16. Verse 16, Jesus said what? Mary. She hears her name. Not enough out of there to tell you that when Jesus spoke her name, everything changed. Morning light broke through the darkness of dawn. Jesus speaks her name and she knew in that moment of life altering intimacy in that face-to-face Spirit to spirit, word to word, person to person interaction with Jesus that life now had me. Look at the next verse. I'm sorry, verse 16, he said, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, what? Rabbi, meaning teacher. But he said to her, neck, don't touch me. Now, 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 if I can just use my sanctified imagination for a minute, I promise you I'll be through. Because I believe in that moment, that irreplaceable moment, in that irreplaceable counter at dawn, that the words of an iconic, contemporary, cultural commentator named Minister Beyonce came to play. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I hear Jesus saying, you must not know about me. Matter of fact, can I, can I be real for just a minute? You, you see, you all missed it. He said, I gave you previews of this coming attraction. Did, didn't you catch my herald triology? Don't you remember supernatural faith of a father starring Jairus and his daughter? Or did you catch family reunion starring Medea from name and her only son? Or did you see Rock in Abraham's bosom starring the Academy Award winner and death the fire Lazarus of Bethany? Right. I hear him say, you must not know about me. Right. Even though you heard me say it is finished, you did not hear me say I was finished. Right. You must not know about me. Uh, you do remember I said three days as Jonah was in the belly of a whale. Uh, three days, if you destroy this temple, I will rise up another. I hear him say, Mary, you must not know about me. Can I adjust the position of phrase, if you will, from the setting of the sun Friday night to the rising of the same this morning, there is a name to be praised. Matter of fact, I hear him say, when my daddy showed up, I woke up, I stood up, I cleaned up, I straightened up, I spoke up. Why did he the living amongst the dead? Now, 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 now this, this is my imagination. But, 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 but I know he was in, 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 in the deep part of the saying, you must not know about me. He, he said, I am irreplaceable. 
Uh, weapons to the left, to the left, to the left, or to the right, to the right, to the right, or in the middle, in the middle. He's saying you must not know come on, come on. about me. Well, come on. Matter of fact, I, I, I believe in my heart that what he wanted Mary to know, if you really know about me, I believe Jesus was saying instead of bringing me spices, you would have brought me breakfast. But you don't know about me. I'm the one who gets up and everybody else says, I can't get up. I'm the one who knows how to go into the pit of hell and come up in power and presence. You must not know about me. Yeah, 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 because I thought about that thing. Yeah, he had told him he was coming back. Three days he had not eaten. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what the came to me. Uh huh. See if I really see. Matter of fact, can I tell y'all something? If they really knew him, there would have been a party in the grave, God. Now, now that they tell me that ain't nothing in a grave, God, but death. But I'm here today to tell you when they put Jesus in the grave, God, life was there. you know that Jesus never met a funeral that he liked? I'm right. I'm right, Pastor. Whenever Jesus showed up in a funeral, life broke out. Come on. Amen. Matter of fact, an old preacher said this one time. And some of y'all heard it before y'all heard it on Saturday. <laughs> when Lazarus died, how many days had he been dead? Oh, he was in a serious state of PU. <laughs> but Jesus showed up in a graveyard. And the Bible said he called Lazarus' name. And in calling Lazarus' name, Lazarus came out the graveyard. Y'all yes. aware of that, right? Do you, do you know why Jesus had to call Lazarus by name? Yeah. The old preacher said if he had just said get up. And the whole brain down put it in. So that thing that should have been just, just like when you want tickets to a movie or, or, or a football game, hook lined up and get you in. There ought to have been a party waiting in the grave now for Jesus to get up. They ought to have had breakfast from hell. Yeah. Yeah. Preach, Pastor. Preach. Preach. I'm about through. I'm done. Come on. Preach. I'm done. Preach, I'm done. Come on. I'm done.
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. And so what happens is she goes and I don't know if she told her other sister, but the other sister come and say, if you had been there, our brother wouldn't have died. So there was a disconnect someplace. I ain't lost the story. <laughs> so there were professional mourners around the graveyard, crying. So four days, when he said, move the stone, what did they say? <laughs> no. They believed that the body was decomposed in such a place, in such a level, that his body was decaying. See, that's why Mary wanted to get to the body. Because see, even though on Friday, his body was on Friday and Saturday, and now it was Sunday, and she didn't want Jesus' body to decay. So that's why she got all these sweet smelling spices and she wanted to preserve his honor. Okay? Now, we get back to the other man. So, we don't want another one because he, he, he stinks. Jesus said, no, throw away the stone. And, and they did. Now, understand this. The Bible said that Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham. What that means he had passed over to the other side awaiting resurrection. Y'all with me? And so he's over there having conversation with Abraham and, and, and Isaac and Jacob. He's talking to David. I mean, he's in a deep conversation with all the patriarchs of the Old Testament. And now over here, he hears all the way across that great gulf, he stops his conversation and he says, Hush! Hush! Somebody's calling my name. Hush! Hush! Because it sounds like Jesus. And his spirit left all the way from Abraham's bosom and got right up in his mouth. And there he was. He had heard the voice of Jesus. as it was 